So as Mitch said, my name is Kathy Perrette and I'm a consultant here in Iowa. And I don't know if all of you have got caught up in the video gaming and Pokemon Go and uh, other types of gaming, but I wanted to start this conversation tonight just around uh, what is it that video games um, have? What types of features do they have that draws into them? And by us, I mean students and ourselves. Uh, I saw an awful lot of adults uh, running around with their phones this summer, and I was not one of them, so I'm not even sure what they were catching, but I know the craze was quite popular. For myself, uh, I the picture on the right of your screen is my current Candy Crush um, little addiction. And so I play a couple games each night and um, just kind of a stress reliever. So if you're able to get into triads and dyads or the instant messaging feature of Shindig, if you could just talk a few minutes, um, and I'm not going to be able to hear you, uh, what draws students and adults into these video games and what features keep us engaged uh, in the games? Um, have that quick conversation and then we can see if we can get on with some of the content here. And Mitch, I'm not really seeing anything except my screen now. And if there's someone that could possibly uh, raise their hand and uh, maybe share a few things on um, with all of us in your thinking with this, that would be great. And if you raise your hand, then Mitch would be able to find you and uh, let you share a couple of your ideas onto the stage. <clears throat> okay, Valaya. So I think what it is, is more of the, it's the, it's the feedback, it's the regular changing of, of leveling up. It's really the gamification of it all. I think it, <clears throat> it's the bells, the whistles. I just think it's um, all of that that's what's engaging the students. Oh, great. I'm hovering over your name here and I don't see it. I'm oh. sorry, I didn't miss your name. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah I mean, yeah, you mentioned some great, great features that draw us into it. So thank you. You're welcome. Does anybody else have a, a quick response and then we'll move on? If you could raise your hand, maybe Mitch could pull you up. Do you have anything else to add to our our first brave person? We'll go on to, um, just pop over to slide five, please, Mitch. So my fascination with all of this came about in about 2011 when Angry Birds came out. And I had heard Jim Knight talk about, um, he talks about formative assessment as one of his big four. So he talked about this whole notion of what do video games have in them um, that are drawing us to it. And Mitch had dropped in my blog post of back in 2011 at the beginning of the chat, and perhaps we can get that out to you again. But I started to take a look at this, and I was um, reassured this week when I had the opportunity to see John Hattie at a workshop in Iowa. He also commented on the fact that video games have these features that we need to try to get into our classrooms. Uh, and so our students' brains are wired for that instant gratification, but so are we. I mean, we can send a text message and we expect a instant text message back. Uh, we don't like to stand in lines. We don't like to wait in traffic. So all of those same features are similar for us as they are for our students. Uh, so it's not blaming kids because they like their technology. I think we're caught up in that same aspect. And so Mitch, if you could go to slide six, please. 
And so what I came up with when I wrote this post and I've been studying it since is that much of the same features that our, our um, person that came up on stage had talked about, it's setting those clear learning intentions. Video games have a learning intention um, and we know what they are. They set success criteria. They have that immediate feedback. They have opportunities for us to question, take risks, and um, then they have that self-assessment built right into them. Uh, John Hattie talked about today that or Monday that they have that Goldilocks theory. You're at a level that's not too hard and not too easy, and it's just your, your just right level. Uh, it knows what you know, and it's progressing you along a path. So, if, Mitch, you could pop to slide seven. Oh, I, I didn't pop to slide. No, you're fine. Back to seven, please. I watched my other screen, and it didn't move. So, the one with the Angry Birds on it, slide seven. One up back from that. Are you, is there no way you can go back to the one previous? Well, picture if you may, um, if you played the game of Angry Birds, there's a setup in which there's a structure and there's some little pigs and they're the bird in the slingshot. And so the game is set up so that you know exactly now what to do. You know that you have to knock down that structure and um, smash those little pigs and uh, move on to the next level. So that's that learning intention. You know what your success criteria are. You know that in order to be successful, you have to complete that level. Uh, the same is true in the classroom, that we need those areas where the students are building in those success criteria, helping us build them. So my background's in reading, so I think about the times when we built rubrics together. Uh, that way, we studied mentor texts and then we built the rubrics together and then the students knew what um, they needed to do as they moved ahead in their writing. Uh, as we've said before, there's that immediate feedback. We know if you're hitting the target, we know if we're not. And we know that there's some effective questioning. Uh, if I'm playing this game, I am going to question whether and, and I know you can't see the screen, but whether I'm flinging that bird to the correct area or not, that it's going to break the structure. And I can continually self-assess. So the slide that you're seeing right now is my little acronym of GAME. And so if we involve our students in the collection of their data, they're gathering that information. Whatever types of formative assessment that we have, we are uh, gathering information. The teacher can analyze it, and we should involve students to analyze that data. Uh, we make a decision once we analyze that data, and then we evaluate if we made the right uh, choice. If you can move to the next slide, please, Mitch. And so I wanted to give you an opportunity just to turn and talk about those five areas that I've mentioned. Um, the learning intentions, the success criteria, the immediate feedback, the effective questioning, and the self-assessment. Have a brief conversation with somebody, a triad or a dyad, or in the instant message feature. And um, in a few mi minutes, we'll ask for somebody to come up on stage and um, perhaps provide your own um, type of information. I'm seeing some uh, great conversation in the room that I'm in, and I know there are other rooms going on. If there's anybody that would like to add to uh, the features that I've mentioned or some examples in their own situations, we'd love for you to raise your hand and Mitch can pull you up on stage.
Well, we'll move on. Uh, Mitch is telling me that no one is raising their hand tonight, and I certainly don't blame you because you've been to a rocky start. Uh, so let's move on to the next slide, Mitch. And so when we're thinking of the areas of formative assessment, uh, we can have tech and we can have low tech. And so just because I brought up the gaming example doesn't mean that we have to have high tech classrooms. If we're fortunate enough to have that, um, that's great, but you know, I taught 18 years and barely had much of anything back in the 80s and 90s, and I was able to do formative assessment and and meet the needs of my students. So it's not about the technology. Uh, so in a case of a low tech um, option, I'm going to share with you one of my favorites that I've. Uh, gained off of the teaching channel and then have you discuss some of your low tech type of formative assessments that you find powerful in the classroom. So if uh, Mitch, you could go to slide 11, please. I'm a fan of the teaching channel. I, I love just watching the videos and gaining something new. I, I met with one teacher a couple of years ago that he has a habit every day where he watches something off of the teaching channel and, and gains a new idea, a new perspective, a new strategy to try out in the classroom. And so this one was brought to my attention. It's called your fa My Favorite No. And so imagine probably a, a upper elementary, middle school, high school type of setting where you've asked students to possibly solve some type of a problem and a more of an expanded problem. Give each student a note card. Uh, they can put their name on the back of it up in the corner. The name's not going to be any more than information for the teacher. And so the students all individually solve whatever problem or write something in which are answering a question and just quickly hand those into the teacher. The teacher can sort those cards very quickly. She can be in the analyze stage at that point in time, and she can sort them quickly into these students have um, seemed to have mastered it. These students are emerging. These students haven't quite um, grasped the concept yet. She'd probably pull one from the middle and maybe a, a, a sample of one that even permeates across several different cards and would put that up on the document camera. No names are shown whatsoever. And she's calling it her favorite no. And so then it's the students who start to analyze that problem and start to see what is happening that's successful in that problem and what is happening that, that's causing the breakdown for the student not to be arriving to the right answer or the right concept. And so this short activity can be a low tech way to check for understanding. The teacher has those cards. She's already divided them up into piles. She can use them further to differentiate her instruction, but it's giving ownership to the students that they're in this together and they're all helping each other out. I would um, encourage you to go to the teaching channel when you have a chance and just search for my favorite no. And um, you know you can learn a little bit more about it in case I didn't explain it um, very clear in this short uh, segment. So Mitch, you could go to slide uh, 12, please. I'm, I have a habit of watching the wrong screen. <laughs> um, so I'd like you to just meet up with your, your room. I've got like the room I'm in, they're doing the instant message thing quite well. And uh, others of you may be joining in dyads and triads if you can hear each other. And just talk about some of your low tech ideas for formative assessment. What types of things do you do to check for understanding, um, to see if students are getting closer to the intended learning, um, intended uh, learning intention, of, if they're getting to that success criteria that you've built in, ways to have that, you know, as immediate as possible uh, feedback with a low tech idea. But talk about a few ideas that you have uh, with each other, and hopefully a few people will share some examples.
Okay, I'm going to try talking one more time and see if you all can hear me. Uh, if you can't hear me, raise your hand. Ah, I'm getting a text that actually my sound is coming through right now. So, okay, good. Okay, thank you very much. And I am so sorry, technical issues. Uh, you can lower your hands now um, because I think we're going to ask for a volunteer in a few minutes uh, to come up on stage. So I'm going to stop my broadcast. Okay, so so can you hear me now, Kathy? Good. Okay, so um, you know I did I I did the whole intro on how to use Shindig, um, but I guess it was silent. So I'm 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 sorry, but I guess people have gotten the hang of it. Um, and this would be a good time to probably again ask for a volunteer to come up uh, to come up on stage. So. It would be great if somebody could raise their hand, then I can bring myself down and uh, somebody could come up and you could discuss uh, low tech messages, low tech methods for uh, for giving feedback that's motivational. So, um, so please, somebody click on the raise hand button underneath your avatar and um, let, let's see if we can, in the meantime, uh, you, you went through a few yourself, Kathy. What what are a couple other low tech methods that you've used? Oh, there's the there's a hand raised. Okay, Eve is is volunteering to come up. So uh, let me let me bring myself down. Although Eve doesn't have a um, a uh, webcam, so let's let's see if she can talk. One second. Welcome to she Can can you hear me? Can you hear yes, me? Eve. Oh great, good. I'm actually yes. covering my. Uh, I'm, I'm in my pajamas, which is why I covered my, my little, uh, my little uh, web camera there. Um, low tech. Um, we we do a sort of a game in our classroom called Back to Back Yes, um, where the kids have dry erase boards and markers. I mean, we've certainly done it with iPads before, um, where you there the kids themselves are they to back they are paired up. And you ask them questions. They write the answers on the board, and they have to check their answer with their partner. If they got it right, they have to high five and say yes. If not, they have to discuss why they didn't get it right. The kids love playing it. It gets them up and moving, and it gives them a chance to talk about their answers. So that's one of my low tech things. Yeah, that's great. Thank you, Eve. Are there any other examples to bring about? If there's other people, or else we can move on to some of the high tech things. Okay. So why don't we move on to high tech, and I'll I'll bring your slides back up. Sounds good. Okay, that's why we're here, actually. <laughs> so, uh, we're gonna go through all the slides. <laughs> Those, yeah, the, the class four one. Yeah, there you go. So one of the reasons why we actually are here is to highlight us flow and I thank them for the opportunity to, to connect with you this evening. But if you're not familiar with class flow, I, I highly encourage you to check it out. Uh, the number one word that teachers love is that it is free. And uh, I think that class flow then respects teachers and, and honors their expertise by providing such a great tool that um, is at no cost. And with Classflow, you can create interactive lessons. You, If your students have devices, so whether it's one-to-one -one or you have two-to-one or you have a small group-to-one device, uh, you can use this to uh, interact with students uh, throughout a lesson 
by providing uh, a multiple different ways to check for understanding. So if you pop to the next slide, Mitch. Uh, in this slide, and I know it's small, um, is there any way that they can see it bigger or can they not? What, there you go. Uh, if you, it, Classflow has a variety of different types of assessments built right in. So you have that choice matrix. We have a closed procedure. So you're giving them a paragraph and taking out certain words. Uh, a creative response where they're actually uh, typing in or um, writing in their answer, uh, their idea. Um, now my chat box is covering up half the things here. I'll look up here. Uh, they can load an image and label it. Uh, they can do a Likert scale. Uh, they can do a longer text. They can do some matching, math formula, multiple choice, uh, short text, sorting, true, false. So within a lesson, you can um, embed these types of short assessments, short check for understandings, engaging your students throughout the lesson. Uh, you can send different questions, different things to different students. So it's it's very it's a tool that you can very much differentiate the needs of your class. So if you pop to the next slide, Mitch. And then the great thing about it is that it can uh, score some of these areas um, instantaneously. Now some of them like the, the text in which they have to write an answer, a teacher might have to scan that and determine um, you know, which place the student is at. But, you know, if this was a class of three students, imagine a class of, uh, you know, your 25 students in your classroom. But at a, a quick glance, you can determine uh, in question number one, uh, all the students seem to be meeting the success criteria. Um, I believe the same was the number six. They were all meeting the success criteria. Something's happening then with question number four. Um, it could be the student's response, it could be the way the question was worded, it could be the um, type of question it was. Uh, so those are things that our teacher determined and, and you would know, you know which direction to go with your next lessons uh, based on the data that you're getting. But it's a way to engage your students um, that bring in all those gaming features that we've talked about earlier and utilizing them uh, in an atmosphere that helps students uh, move through those that continuum of learning just like a, a video game. I know there are other tools out there besides Classflow. I'd love for you if you in your your instant messaging or your dyads or triads to either talk about your experiences possibly with Classflow. I know we have some Classflow ambassadors in the room. Uh, or what are other high tech uh, types of uh, tools that you use in the classroom that help engage student in the area of formative assessment. Would love for you to have that conversation so that we can just share out some of those tools or your experiences with Classflow. Yeah, and let me also say that if you have a question for Kathy, um, you can type, you can uh, click on that ask button underneath your avatar and that question will go to me and I can pass it to Kathy. If my audio had been working, uh, you, I would have explained that before. Um, but anyhow, so uh, better late than never is, is you can ask a question by clicking on that question button and typing in a question and I can pass it to Kathy. Or, and Kathy, are you looking for some volunteers to come up on stage now? Or are you I, looking for... if they're ready okay if they have some different um, high-tech types of tools that they want to share or any experience with classflow in particular or if they have some questions about classflow okay and i'll pull myself down in any case and get your slides back up um, and then we can go to the next slide also Hi, it's Eve again. Can you hear me? 
Yeah, Steve, thank you. Yeah, um, well, like two things that we use a lot. Obviously, we use Classflow quite a lot because we are um, sort of a Promethean school district. So when Classflow merged, when well, Promethean merged with Classflow, we've been, you know, getting teachers to move over to the Classflow format or platform. But we also, a lot of teachers use Kahoot. A lot of teachers use quizzes. So those are two, like, very popular sort of um, assessing, quick assessing high-tech ways that we use other things uh, besides Classflow, although we use Classflow quite a lot. Good, good. Thank you, Eve. I think we have Jill coming up next to share some things. That meeting. Hi there. <clears throat> um, I've never used Promethean. <clears throat> I'm in a new school district this year, so Promethean is completely new to me. I've used smart boards before um, and the clickers with it. Um, but I have also used Socrative um, for some feedback. Um, and of course, I use Quizzes and Kahoot. Um, and I've also been using exit tickets and different strategies with Google Classroom and Google Forms now that they're quizzes okay. and can be graded. So those sure. are what I've been sure. using excellent. high tech. Excellent, you know, excellent choices there. I think we've just. It's uh, important to use a variety just so students don't get burned out in one um, and keep that variety in fresh. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I think we have, we have, um, we've got some questions that sounds like coming up. <clears throat> So I was going to bring Patrice up, but it looked like she was muted. So uh, I'm going to ask the questions for um, uh, sure, sure. Uh, Patrice and uh, Christina. Um, okay. So Christina asked, uh, Christina Johnson asked, um, how do you get the students to all take the assessment? I mean, in class flow. Yes, in class and, flow. And I hope, and I hope I'm answering this um, correctly. Uh, because I'm a new ambassador as well and learning the ropes. But uh, what I have seen is there's a teacher set of cards and then there are some student cards and you can move those student cards over to the students' actual devices and send them the assessment that way. Um, so that it goes from your device to their device floating in the cloud <laughs> and mm -hmm. um, the students then are able to see uh, the, the answer. Okay. Or see the okay. question. The, and if yeah. and Christine, if that didn't ask your answer your question, feel free to uh, to to elaborate and ask it again. And then uh, Patrice Scott um, asked, uh, "Can you use Flash Flow Class Flow with Google Forms?" Um, I see Bethany is popping into yes, Bethany is popping into my chat, but yes, mm -hmm. she's saying yes, you can you can you can integrate them, and she also is saying that it works great with smart boards and any interactive whiteboard. Um, you know, my suggestion is you know popping through some of the various different training materials that Classflow has. Uh, and and working through it and what's great about it is anytime you're in class flow there's a little help icon up in the upper right hand corner and pop them a question and help is on the way or there is a community area where many of us who are ambassadors um, frequent a lot so when there's a question that comes up just pop it right there in that community and someone's going to be you know right with you with your question mm -hmm. Okay, and then um, Ken also uh, raised his hand, so I'm going to bring myself down and bring Ken up. Perfect. Although it looks like uh, Ken didn't come through, so uh, when I brought him up, so oh, I thought Ken looked like Mitch. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, so, uh, so uh, I'll just say uh, Rosanna asked a question: Does Classflow have any games already built in? Um, uh, Bethany, can you answer that? 
pop something in my chat. And then, um, so we'll, Beth, we're waiting for Bethany. Um, Christina asked, um, does she have to download any programs to use the assessments? Um, no, the it's all online. It's a, a web-based type of thing, so everything is there. You don't have to download anything. And Bethany, on the other question, is saying yes, there are already made interactive activities as well. Um, okay. There, and there's also a free marketplace, and so teachers are creating lessons, uh, and you can get a lot of free resources that way. And the other thing that they do uh, respect teachers is that teachers can actually sell their lessons. So there's some, you know, lessons that are tried and true and in, in classrooms and working and um, similar to other, you know, teacher type of stores, but a way for teachers to, to monetize their great ideas um, for a cost. Okay. And it looks like Eve has her hand up again, so uh, she may have another question also. So I'm going to bring myself down and I'll bring Eve back. Sounds great. <clears throat> um, I was just going to add that, yes, that Classflow has got a lot of great, they have like word searches and flashcards and all kinds of things built into it. I know I did a, um, I did a lesson that be in the marketplace that anybody can search for, and it was for, um, I use their built-in flashcards, gaming sort of type thing for um, oh, sight words, and um, it's just very easy to use. So I would definitely recommend it um, with it. I've given a class just recently, an entire assessment on the solar system, which I also put in the marketplace for free. So if anybody's looking to assess their class, but, you know, the kids had to circle what planet was, you know, you know Jupiter, et cetera, and they really enjoyed it, so. Oh, awesome. Which I like all those little, those, those, like before when I was doing it, online assessments is always usually just boring multiple choice. So I like all of the different options that we have in that sort of class flow system. Um, so it's not just, it's, you know, you got drop downs, drag and drop, you've got his notes and all that stuff. So I just thought I would contribute. <laughs> right, right. No, that's excellent, Eve. Thank you. And yes, I mean, so many choices. Uh, a teacher can really uh, think about what it is that they want to assess because we all know, I mean, building an assessment um, and checking for students' understanding is, it's rocket science, just like all of teaching is. And so having so many options in which we can uh, get to the students learning, and it doesn't mean that all students have to have the same um, question or the same option. Um, I think of my teachers that have English learners in the classroom. Well, I might not give them the, the assessment piece with maybe a longer writing text, and I might give them the matching piece, but I can build that right in so that I'm assessing their knowledge where they're at, and I'm assessing students that um, have a, a deeper sense of maybe the English and can write more. So. Uh, a great tool to differentiate and, and meet the needs of all of our kids. And we have a person on a tablet, uh, Jaime Delgado, who raised his hand, but unfortunately um, on, the, on the tablet, the only thing I can uh, interact with you is, is if you ask a question. So Jaime, if you can click on the ask question, if you have a particular question or comment, then I can pass it on. Um, but I, unfortunately I can't. Um, I can't uh, just bring you bring you up or um, or interact with you otherwise. Uh, there were two other questions. Uh, one question about uh, whether you can export assessment results outside of Classflow. Like, can you put it into an Excel document, for example, or CSV file? Um, Bethany or Eve, do you have a big answer for that one? I'm sure you're going to say yes. Okay, and Eve <laughs> said yes, you can. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, they're at it long. Yeah, and Bethany just said, yes, you can. Um, okay. I'm learning the ropes. I'm the newbie. <laughs> okay. And so what, what I think I'll do is, uh, you have some more slides left, correct? You Do you want me to just um, pull your... I just, I just have a closing slide there that I'd love to hear just some takeaways. And um, so if you want to pick okay. that last... That kind sure. Of has... uh, let me, I'll bring myself down and I'll, I'll, I'll bring that slide up.
And so really this last slide here is just, uh, again, showing the different um, pieces that I kind of dug out of video games, the learning intentions, the success criteria, and so forth and my acronym of GAME. Uh, and then thinking about all the great uh, low-tech and high-tech tools that we have shared just in this hour tonight. I mean, I think the ones that have been shared have been phenomenal and very helpful for teachers. Um, would love to have you just chat in your instant message or with the dyad or triad again. Um, just some takeaways, something you learned tonight. Uh, in the, sense of an, an hour PD or we got started a little late, um, but chances are there's a takeaway that you'd like to continue to explore on your own a little bit more. And so why people are, are hopefully putting their takeaways into either the chat window or uh, you, you could put it, even though it, it says technically ask a question, you could put it into the question area, and in which case I can pass it on uh, to Kathy. Um, so you found that by using these techniques, it's the, the kids or the, the students don't dread um, assessment as much as they do uh, if you, pulling a surprise quiz or, or, or pulling a test, that it's more game-like, that they... Um, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but that's what I'm, right. I'm gathering. Right. Um, well, and I think it really goes back to that learning intentions and success criteria that we talked about. I mean, we've got to be clear on those. And I don't even know if I shared in the beginning um, with John Hattie's research, but he talked again on Monday about teacher clarity. And so when John has studied uh, all of he's done a meta analysis and figured out the effect size of many different things. Um, teacher clarity was at a 0.75 and so anything above four, a 0.4 for him is good and so teacher clarity is huge and so that learning intentions and that success criteria um, involving the students in those um, I felt like in them and I taught in the classroom in the 80s and 90s but I felt it bought buy-in I and mean, we we did things like literature circles, reader and writer workshops. So it wasn't just maybe gaming and, and gamifying a classroom, but involving them. And they mm -hmm. knew what they were to go after. So that's, that's interesting. And, um, and, you know, I find, you know, kids, um, I mean, they want to know how they're, everybody wants to know how they're doing. Okay. But when we attach, um, a judgment on how they're doing that that kind of removes all the fun out of it and I you know I think right. tools you know class flow is as an example when used to support learning and using assessment for learning instead of assessment uh, solely of learning that um, that, that it could be very motivational right and involving them I mean involving them in building the success criteria involving them in providing feedback I mean, all those little tech ways can um, students can provide feedback for each other it doesn't always mm -hmm. have to be just a, a teacher gives us out and student passes it in type of thing it's it's getting that that learning community that they're taking risk and they're they're learning together and they're moving forward uh, okay so yeah. has a question in here do well, it's like actually, it? it's, it's a comment. Um, okay. So I don't know if, if you saw it, but it basically uh, she's thanking, thanking you. Uh, and, oh. and she likes the idea of being able to do assessments in different modalities for students at the same time. Um, and she can't wait to try. Well, good. Thank you so much. OK. So again, I, I have to apologize for our uh, my evidently technical issues when getting started and I'm usually the one who's troubleshooting so I'm not used to being the one who is glad having the technical <laughs> right well you're glad that um glad it wasn't wasn't you but um but, you know and, and normally I have a backup PC but I um I actually lent my backup to my dad so this was it but it, it eventually came on so thank you all for hanging in there
um, it's you know it's it's just after nine right now. Uh, we're going to have a transcript of, uh, or actually we'll we'll have a, an archive of this session that we'll put up on on the website along with Kathy's slides. And in her slides is the is the contact information for Kathy. So if you have other questions on assessment, um, uh, or just want some coaching uh, on because you coach other things, right? Uh, yes, I, I, mean, I coach teachers, and I also one of the big things I do is I coach instructional coaches. So I really believe we all um, deserve a coach, and and I have coaches in my own life that help me move forward and meet goals. And so I just want to help others shine. That's my sole purpose. Right, and you even have that on your website. I do. I want to make it right. shine. Right. So, um, well, thank you for, for making this session shine. Um, I won't say that five times fast. That would be, that'd be pretty difficult. Uh, but, but thank you so much, Kathy. Uh, thanks for your understanding and, and, and your ability to, uh, to cope with the technical problems. And, um, oh, Christina asked, would you be able to do a teacher professional development? And um, I'm going to answer that by saying darn straight, <laughs> right? <laughs> oh yeah, she can contact me and we can work something out. Okay. Um, okay, so Kathy, uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you uh, for thank you Classflow for, for putting this together um, on, uh, on on assessment and the one we're having in two weeks, which will be on uh, robotics and programming that can be used in all classrooms. And uh, Kathy, I guess I'll, I'll talk to you soon. Sounds okay. great. Thank All right. you, Mitch, and thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Okay, and this is Mitch Weisberg. I'm signing off for EdChat Interactive. Thank you again for coming, and hope to see you at a future event. Good night.